In the previous video, I demonstrated how to set up and use Virtual Box, which is a free and open source solution to be able to run other operating systems virtually in your PC. You don't need to partition your hard drive if you have a Virtual Box. In this video, I will guide you how to install and run Ubuntu in a Virtual Box. In this case, Ubuntu will be the guest OS in your PC. Before we proceed, and if you haven't already done, go to the Ubuntu website, ubuntu.com, to download the ISO file that you need to install as a guest OS or operating system. On the home page, along the tabs, go to Downloads, click on Ubuntu Desktop, scroll down to the version that you wish to install. For this case, we have Ubuntu 21, and we have Ubuntu 20, but now we are going to install Ubuntu 20 LTS. Click on download. Don't open the file. Instead, leave the default settings, which is save file, and save it to the location where you, you can find it easily. So click save. For this case, my OS will go to the downloads, but I've already downloaded the image. So click OK to begin downloading the ISO file for Ubuntu Desktop. When done, launch your virtual box by opening it. And then now I will show you how to create the best operating system. Because this is the beginner guide, I will try to simplify the process as much as possible. In the upper right, select New. This is where you can provide the name of the guest OS the folder or the location where you want the guest OS to be saved and your files, the type of the OS and the version as well. So now I'm going to cut the name, but you can name it as you wish, but I'll keep this simple and then I'll name it as Ubuntu. So you can see by default, you can see the type as Windows or Windows 7, 64-bit, but once I write the name Ubuntu, automatically the type will change to Linux and the version will be 64-bit Ubuntu 20, but you can change to 32-bit depending on your computer. So click next in the screen memory size. This is where you select the memory that you want to allocate to your guest system. Since we are installing Linux, it is not going to be as resource intensive as Windows. So we won't need so much memory to be allocated. It's normal a good idea to never allocate more than half of the memory that you have in your OS system. So if you have 16 gigabyte, try to avoid allocating more than eight gigabyte to reduce the risk of crashing your host system. So for this case, I'm going to use two gigabyte, which is equal to 2048 MB. Click next. So on the hard disk, keep the default, which create a virtual hard disk. So create a virtual hard disk now, create. You'll now be Ask it to choose the type of the file that you want to use for new virtual hard disk. In my past experience, VDI was great. So we choose VDI or we leave it as a default. So click next, select it dynamically allocated. A dynamically allocated hard disk file will only use space on your physical hard disk as to maximum fixed size although it will not shrink again automatically when space on it is freed. So click on dynamically allocated and select next. In the file location, you don't need to change. You can leave it as default. You can also select the size of the virtual hard disk to determine how much data in the virtual machine will be stored. Depending on how you plan to use the guest OS, will it determine the size that you select? But for this case, because I'm using it for demonstration, I will leave the default settings and then create. 
Now, depending on the, the guest operating system that you're installing, the details will be seen here, like general system display, storage, audio, network, USB, shared folders, and description. So here are the details we provided earlier. The next step, click on settings. In general, you will see the information you entered earlier, like the name, type, and version. Some other option can be left as default, like the advanced description and disk. In system, you will see the memory you previously allocated for your guest OS. Click on processor. You may want to adjust the processor, but never go more than half of the CPU in your basic PC. So we can adjust it up to two CPU. With Ubuntu, two CPU should be fine. In display, you can adjust it, or you can leave these settings at default, but you can enable the acceleration, enable 3D acceleration. In the storage, click on empty, and then go to optical drive, leave the default, but select it, and choose, in the file main, choose or create virtual optical disk. So click here, and then you need now to browse the ISO file that you downloaded the area. Click add and then browse the file. This is our file, Ubuntu 20 desktop. So select the file and select the file here. You can double click here to set the file. Double click and the file will be added. So some other option the network audio serial ports usb can be left as default but you have the option to select the folder that can be shared between the host and the guest os so you can click add here and select the folder path select others and then you can select any file from your basic pc and then you can choose the option if you want to set read only or auto mount but you can leave them as default when done click ok so now when you go to storage here you see that our file has been added here the iso file so we have provided the basic detail that we need to install the guest os in our virtual box the next step now click start to begin installing your operating system so we click start so now the installation for ubuntu has begun so you need to be a bit patient because the process takes time to complete the installation so now the installation setup is ready, so we can select the language I. By default, it's English, so we leave it as default. And we have two options here. We have Try Ubuntu and we have Install Ubuntu. So we select Install Ubuntu. Click. In this option, we need to select the keyboard. So we we'll leave the English US by default, but you can test it to see if it's typing. So it's typing. You can see. And then select the continue. Select continue. So here we have options. We choose the default settings, normal installation, where we install the web browser, utilities, office software, games, and then media players. So we leave the default settings. We click continue again. In this option, Installation type, this computer currently has no detected operating system. What would you like to do? So we are going to erase disk and install Ubuntu because our disk is empty. So we leave the default again. We click install now. This is the warning message. If you continue, the changes listed below will be written to the disk. Otherwise, you'll be able to make further changes. So we click continue. Where are you? In this option, we need to select the time zone. So for this case, 
I choose that salam and click continue. Who are you? We need to provide the account that will be used to log in into our guest OS. So my name, I'll provide green ICT. Name. We need to choose the password, but if you choose login automatically, you'll be able to log in automatically without being asked the password or the username. But for this case, I select require my password to log in. So we create the account, which is this one, and the password this way, and then click continue. So Ubuntu installation is now copying files. So that's why I say, it. so you need to be patient because now the installation is a process. Now it's almost finished copying files. Now in this stage, the system is being installed. Installation is complete. You need to restart the computer in order to use this new installation. But remind you that the computer going to, re to restart isn't the best PC or the host. It is this virtual machine. Restarting now. So now it is restarting. So now our guest OS has rebooted correctly. So now it is working. You remember we created this user. So we click to login. We use the password that we created the area. Now we are successfully logging. This is the virtual machine and this when the blue screen you see this is windows and this is the basic pc or the host the host we have been talking about is this basic pc that we are using while this is the virtual machine and we are successful installed with ubuntu so you can begin using ubuntu so when you go to view here you can click on full screen mode so you can say do not show this message again switch so this is the full screen mode where we don't see the basic host PC but only the virtual machine and the guest OS. But if you want to quit, you just go here at the bottom, you click on the view and then you click full screen mode and then you will be back in the normal screen mode. Again, we can adjust the window size here by dragging in and out of this virtual machine so as you can see and uh, we can take a screenshot and more option that you can see here that we'll cover later in the coming videos if you want to shut down this virtual machine just launch the virtual machine virtual box and then go to the our operating system that we created earlier the ubuntu 20 and then it cross you can save the state or you can power it off so now we want to power it off click on power off so this will cause any unsaved data in application learning inside to be lost so we need to make sure that all your data are saved so we create power off so now when you check the status the power is off so if you want to close the virtual box you Click here to close it. Let's check now how to switch on the guest operating system. What you need to do, launch the virtual box. Double click to open the virtual box. And then now you see our guest operating system is powered off. You simply right click, go to start and normal start. And then our guest OS is starting now booting this is how you can start the guest os once it's powered off and this is the end of our lesson today thanks for watching and see you in the next video